Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. They broke through the door and helped themselves to everything. The one key clue a store owner is hoping you'll recognize in this video. And a family devastated. A 16-year-old out swimming with friends goes under the water and doesn't come back up. But we begin on this Memorial Day with sweltering hot weather. Right now it's 91 degrees in downtown Detroit, and you aren't getting any relief in the suburbs either. It's 91 degrees there too right now. Uh, and right off the top here, Belle Isle has been closed temporarily because of overcrowding. State police say they'll monitor the situation as people leave. But in the meantime, the only place you're going to find any relief from the heat is in a pool or maybe inside in, in the air conditioning. Or in your mind, just think about <laughs> January 20th and then just enjoy it. Right. Well, 95 is the record, so it looks like we may have fallen a little short. Let's kick things off with Andrew Humphrey, who's in for Ben tonight. Hey, Andrew. Sure, we may not make a record, you guys. You're exactly right. It is still a scorcher out there, and we did it again, ladies and gentlemen. Temperatures 90 or more, second day in a row. The record on the state, as Jason mentioned, 95 set not that long go in 2012. It's 93, close to 95 for our friends over in Pontiac, even above 90 degrees up in Lapeer where it's now 91. Flint, good afternoon. Good Memorial Day to you. 91 degrees there. Ann Arbor checking in at 92, 93 in Adrian. And it feels slightly hotter. The heat indices mostly in the low and middle 90s depending on where you are. So still take care out there in the heat, even in these waning hours of the holiday. Wear light and loose fitting clothes. Make sure you drink plenty of water. Water is always the best beverage on a day like this and make sure you take action. Check on your neighbors. You can take a break from mowing the lawn because remember it's still an air quality alert day for today. And as always, kids and pets away from empty vehicles. Even though you'll feel that temperature drop, the temperature inside those cars can skyrocket just like that. What about temperatures later on this week? We'll talk about that. An update on subtropical storm Alberto. It's made landfall. Does it make its way here? I'll answer that coming up. Well, Let's get right outside and just see how things are and check in with Priya Mann. Yeah, she's uh, live downtown at Cadillac Square. Hi there, Priya. Hey, Kimberly Jason. So I got to tell you, I went with a summer dress and a ball cap. You got to do what you got to do to stay cool out here. But a lot of families are having fun. You've got kids. They're playing basketball, taking full advantage of the courts. You've got couples enjoying the beer garden. And then you have other families who are having picnics under the shade. So we just don't put it all over in there. Keeping cool starts with staying hydrated. If you're not in shade, you need to stay hydrated. You come out here with your family, have fun, no drama, um, just cool, you know, Detroit. And if drinks aren't enough, the splash pad at Mount Elliott works too. It's good and warm. How many times have you been in there? Uh, like three times or four times. It's real hot. And what does the water feel like when you run under there? Really, really cool. As temps across Metro Detroit soared into the 90s, families found every last spot under the shade. We've been waiting for the sun. It's been too cold. We can't complain now. Not everyone had the holiday Monday off, but that doesn't mean you can't have fun. Over at Cadillac Square, we came across this one on one game. Getting me tired. I'm sweating all right. I'm sweating. Here we go, right here. Oh. Even with all that equipment, Officer Roberts was a good sport. It's not too bad. I'm Why used to it. You, you used to it? Playing college, college football. How are you guys staying cool? I don't know. Probably moving around a lot and drinking the slushy. Drinking the slurpees. Slushy? And I spoke to some couples in the beer garden. They're having adult slushies under the shade. We're all finding ways to stay cool. Of course, the most important thing, have a lot of water and sunscreen as well. We just saw DNC Express. They just pulled up here as well. Your safety is important. So again, have sunscreen, lots of water. And you know, guys, just a few minutes out here, you really start to feel it. But I'm not complaining. Winter felt like it was here forever. Finally, we've got this summer-like weather. Reporting live from Cadillac Square, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya, we appreciate it. And this just into the newsroom, a power outage affecting parts of Cedar Point. The park says the outage hit around 145 this afternoon when a car hit a utility pole, leaving some riders stuck. Cedar Point now says power has been restored and all rides will be back up and running as soon as possible. Our other top story tonight, a family in Oxford absolutely devastated tonight after a 16 year old drowned in Clear Lake. 
Oakland County Sheriff say LaFrance Marshall went swimming with friends just after seven last night and went under the water about 50 feet offshore. Nick Monticelli just talked to the family. Nick, I know it's hard to imagine what they're going through right now. You know, what's really interesting about this, Kimberly, is that obviously they are devastated. They are torn apart right now, especially his mother. But just wait until you see what the community has done, specifically his friends and students. But I want to back up just a little bit and kind of tell you how we got to the point that we're at right now. So as you mentioned yesterday, LaFrance Marshall, 16 years old, was out with his buddies, three of them at Clear Lake, which is about 12 minutes from here. He tried, he tried swimming all the way across the lake, but he started struggling about 50 feet from the shore before going under. Deputies, the fire department, the dive team all came to help, but unfortunately he was found in about 25 feet of water. Now responders did CPR all the way to the hospital, but they could not bring him back. Now that brings us to today. And I, again, I gotta tell you, after spending some time here, I am getting the picture that LaFrance was everybody's friend. Just take a look at this video here. The word started spreading really quickly throughout this community that LaFrance passed away yesterday. So today, nearly 200 of his friends showed up at a nearby elementary school. They walked about half a mile down the main road to his mother's house. All of them wanted to give her flowers and hugs for the entire family, for especially this mother who just lost her 16-year-old son. And his family says they knew LaFrance was loved, but not quite this much. The love, the support from the community, it is a blessing and a gift from God. A butterfly has flown away, but the love will remain throughout the years. So much love, so much respect, so much honor from children. I expected like a little bit of kids, like his friends that I know, like Solon and them. But I didn't expect like a, a lot of kids to be in our front yard. Not in a million years. Could I have imagined that all these beautiful children who will come and bring all these beautiful flowers and show so much love and respect to our family? We knew he had a lot of friends, but not like this. And we thank each and every one of you for the flowers, for the donations, for the love, for the respect, and for the honor. Yeah, my brother was a nice person. <laughs> he was really nice. Now, I've got to tell you, I've been doing this for about 15 years now, and rarely do you see that many people come together this quickly. And, and mind you, Jason and Kimberly, this wasn't put together by adults. These are 15 and 16 year old kids that decided that their friend meant so much to them that they wanted to come here to mom's house and show their support. Now, coming up on Local 4 News at 6 o'clock, we're going to talk more about that support and what the school district is doing to make sure this family and the rest of those kids are okay. We're live here in Oxford, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Amazing support by his friends indeed. Uh, Nick, I know it's still early and they're probably still making arrangements, but what do you know about that and funeral expenses? Well, what I can tell you is that the family originally did say that they needed help with the funeral expenses, so a friend of theirs put together a GoFundMe page. This was last night. Remember, he went swimming at 7 o'clock last yeah. night. The last time I checked, about 30 minutes ago, that had over $12,000 in it. That's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable support. Okay, Nick, we appreciate it, and we look forward to hearing from you at 6 o'clock. We have an update now to a story Local 4 first reported over the weekend. It involves a shooting in the Greektown area. Two people were arrested after gunshots were exchanged near Bobian and Lafayette streets. Nobody was hurt in this, but police saying it's going to be taking actions to prevent future incidents by focusing on businesses in that area. We're going to be looking at some of our, our more problematic establishments, so those establishments downtown that draw in crowds that, that, that may be more unseemly. Um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to those owners um, this week, and we're going to also have um, an even more um, increased enforcement effort in those areas as well. Police say they'll be using some of the strategies that have been used in neighborhoods and put them into effect in the downtown area. A man was fatally shot this morning on Detroit's west side. According to Detroit police, a witness heard gunshots and saw someone running from the scene. An 18-year-old man was found with a gunshot wound to his head. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police have detained an 18-year-old man for questioning. The investigation, meanwhile, continues. 
I'm at the cookouts, the boating and time in the pool. It's sometimes easy to forget the true meaning of Memorial Day. It's the day we honor those that made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And as our Everett Academy shows us memorable scenes all across town today are playing out and paying tribute to those who gave all. The streets were lined with people here in Sterling Heights for the 39th annual Memorial Day Parade, a day of remembrance for the lives lost fighting for our country. Well, it's wonderful. It's just a chance to, to have a day to honor those, you know, because I got back. Not, not everybody did. William Andrew has been riding in this car in the city's parade for the past couple of years. He served in the Army for 26 years and wants people to understand just how important today really is. It's important just to take a moment to remember, you know, what we have in this country and just to, to realize that uh, it took a little sacrifice. It's honoring those people, the people who have fallen to fight for us. It's a very important day. The message was heard loud and clear with freshman Elena Sullivan. The Henry Ford Marching Band student is marching in this parade for the first time and couldn't be more excited and honored to participate. So the parade here in Sterling Heights starts here at the city center courtyard and makes its way down Dodge Park Road. It has everything from high school marching bands to veterans and even a young group of color guards. We've talked about, um, you know, basically uh, the freedoms of that. We enjoy our freedom because of others that have fought and served. They've given it all. There's not much you can say. I wouldn't even want to try. The words fall short. I mean, thank you just seems so, we can't thank you enough. In Sterling Heights, Everett Kasumi, Local 4. And definitely a day you want to remember that. Paul Tupman's going to actually be talking more about this coming up at 6. Yeah, I saw our story at 4. That was great, too. Yeah. A new construction headache is set to kick off later this week on I-75. The important thing downriver drivers need to know so you don't get stuck driving 13 miles out of the way. And a virtual wall of water rushing through a Maryland town. New here at 5, what caused this devastating flood that experts are calling a once-in-a-thousand-year event? Larry. Do you know the guys in this video? Police say they robbed a liquor store on the Choice East Side this morning. I'm Larry Spro, and I'll tell you why police say they believe these guys are connected to other break-ins in the area.